Okay. Fabulous. We're live. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. Haven't done this before. This is exciting. Um, I know. We'll find out if it works. Yeah. It's working so far. I can see you and hear you. That's good. Um, so you're in you're in um, Mallorca. Uh, I am in South of Spain in Marbella, but they sound really similar and I've confused them for oh, okay. the last year. Well, that's an amazing start. Um, um, and what... Wh wh <laughs> Where so if if I was to pick, is that like a bull ring or a bull fighting stadium? Is it one of those? It is incredible. So this is where the matadors uh, used to come and fight in the south of Spain. So all the most famous matadors in the world. This was kind of like their center stage, and okay. the Marbella Championship is basically gone. Let's put our athletes into the shoes of those bullfighters. That's cool. And is that the is that the Very final cool. event to say like behind you there now? Is that like basically the final? Yes. So about to kick off are the male elites, the final event yeah. of the entire thing. Currently, you've got Luka Dukic, who has a pretty commanding lead. Um, the likelihood, unless he completely falls off a cliff now, he's going to take the overall of the competition. But it's still quite interesting between Martin Cuervo and uh, Victor Lundahl as to who takes second and third. So that's literally what's just about to happen. and It's about to get very loud in here. That's okay. Um, I actually, so I put up a, a story earlier on and Luka Jukic replied to it and said, that's me. And I said, yeah, it's you. I was like, go win it. Go win it so we can chat later. And he goes, I've already won it. <laughs> he, was like, <laughs> he was like, mathematically, it's like, unless I do something absolutely ridiculous. He was like, I have 62 point lead and there's 55 for the final. Um, what's the what's the general vibe like with the athletes? Are they, are they loving it? Are they, because I know they started off with like a bit of a grief run, didn't they? It was a bit of a rough uh, first event. I think it was just a shock, right? So we went to the top of this incredible mountain. It had amazing views. Um, and kind of that was kind of the nice thing about it is we're going off site. We're going to these places that really sell what the South of Spain's all about. But it wasn't the easiest run. Um, and they didn't know the distance. So no one knew how to pace it. Uh, and that's the most interesting thing about how that was programmed. Uh, but it might have caused a tiny bit of controversy early on. Oh, You can smack it. Like, I've got a guest waiting in the wings for you in charlie oh, yeah. and, and he can tell you all about the run oh yeah 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 yeah. i'll hear i'll hear all about that um and what are they like is it like as picturesque around it as you'd imagine it to be it's it's marbella it is like beautiful white buildings like manicure garden and um, the after party the important part of the weekend is being held just across the road in this kind of insane three level club coffee shop on the bottom super fancy restaurant and then open top rooftop bar, you know, okay. it's exactly what you would expect of Marbella. Yeah, it's so hilarious, a, a, actually. A holiday in October, basically. Yeah. Do you know what my favorite thing was? I turned up on the first day, and the media team were driving around in a Mustang, like a convertible Mustang. Wow. Okay. I know. Um, it seems like they might have their budgets like so. Some the wrong person is deciding where the money goes. If that's the. Uh, I believe that's just the hire car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and then, so you've been watching, so you, you're like kind of, I've seen you doing interviews and I've seen you watching, um, you know, kind of field reporting, doing interviews before, doing interviews after and that kind of stuff. Has there anybody, has there been anybody there that's caught your eye that you maybe haven't seen in Berlin or at the games or anything? Um, I think if we're talking about elite field, um, Martin Cuervo probably really stands out and came 40th in Europe. So he was at the semi-finals, but he was quite like fighting in the kind of the storyline sections that he was ready to get picked up on. Yeah. Uh, he's getting better and better. He's still only 24. He's not part of that kind of Spanish crew that we see. So he's kind of working slightly like with his own programming and working hard. And obviously Fabi Benito tends to feel headlines. Um, as well as the Noyal Akai, but I think he's probably the next man in the wings in Spain to start. He's currently in third in the men's elite. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's, oh, he's, not, he's jumped up to second after that last event, even better. So, That's yeah, cool. Martin Cuervo. Uh, once keep your eye on for the future out of this part of the world. And has just been like a spectacular joy to get to know. Like, we all remember him from winning that what was it 22.1 workout and we were like who is this guy yeah. this like out of sweden but the interview i did with him the other day he just opened up about <laughs> just having a laugh i almost cracked my pants in like the devil workout you know he's got a real personality and he's out here with a load of lads from sweden including phil Hester. and 
for a bit of fun more than anything. 25 and South Top 3 was one event to go. So, you know, they're still competitors when they're on the floor. Luka Jukic is just pop, basically oh, dominating, Luka's, though. Yeah. It's, and that, honestly, it's so good for Luca just because he, he got injured here last year and spent the entire, um, he didn't even start, he spent the entire week in the sidelines. So to come back and actually perform and do this well, also off the back of a slightly substandard Madrid and then a game season where he like withdrew at European semi-finals. If anything, like we, we've been saying behind the scenes about building his confidence and it's definitely doing that. And he's such fun to have around, right? He's always giving you banter. He's always being a little bit cheeky. Oh, you don't want my interview after that workout, do you, Lauren? Like, we can't interview you every day, Luca. It doesn't work. <laughs> but no, yeah. he's a proper laugh and a great laugh. Yeah, he's funny. And I like uh, him. And one of the things I like about him and Azara is they're shamelessly leaderboard and shamelessly game the points and like like they don't care how it looks or how it sounds they're like if i beat him and if you come third then that's good enough you know like they're flat out like mathematics that's what we do on spans of the four that's the fun bit yeah the mutations then what if what if it's like they're just getting in in on the action um and then on the female side then what's the story there anybody jumping out uh, Natalie Niska, she's honestly, for me, I didn't know a huge amount about her. I spoke to her on the football field the other day and she was like, she didn't expect this. It's kind of come a little bit out of nowhere. But as you can see, she's racked up those event wins. I don't know a huge amount about this woman, but I hope to know a lot more by the end of the day. Um, yeah. Obviously, the female field here isn't kind of big names jumping out. Like if I'm to look at like from a British perspective, Helen Nutter and Emily Steele, they're girls that we know from the UK stage. Like Helen Nutter's been to the game. They've had an awful two years of semi-finals, every year having to withdraw on the fourth injury. Um, and then Emily Steele, one of our latest gladiators on the TV show, is dynamite. But she's also a, um, I mean, she's dynamite, yes, on the floor, but also a name from the show. Uh, but she's also a record holder in British weightlifting. Um, she's only 21, so quite frankly, this is the beginning. She's about to and, like, go full force into CrossFit next year. So watch this space with Emily Steele. That's cool. Um, how does that work? When does she finish with Gladiators then? When is Gladiators over? So it's done in terms of filming for this series, and it goes out in, in like, a couple of weeks' time. So, yeah, we can all get really stuck into Some of your listeners are not going to be old enough to remember how good it was. Yeah, <laughs> I'm old enough. To, I'm old enough to remember how shit it shit it was. Maybe we were watching two different shows. <laughs> like um, cottage in South Wales, and like you put it on telly every Saturday night with your mum and dad. It's like that kind of program. Yeah, I think it's because I've subsequently seen clips, and in with the benefit of hindsight, I'm like, this is absolutely terrible. Like it's so like oh, it in the eighties, nineties. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, right. So then the can I, stand... Can I... Sorry. Go on, go on. I was going to say, can I hand you over to our guest so he can, like, so he can have a bit of downtime and enjoy what everything that comes with, you know, finishing a competition in first place? Absolutely. So, Charlie Holthoff, I'm going to jump in. He's just won the adaptive division. Convincingly, with a great final performance literally 10 minutes ago. Um, it's mullet, crop top, you know, you're gonna love him. Hey, how are you? Yo, good man, how are you? I'm good. We just followed each other today on Instagram. Right, keep talking. How exciting. <laughs> I know, amazing. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a, the start of a rom com. I hope so. I hope a, re so. a really shit low budget rom com. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. How are you? So you're uh, you're in the standing adaptive division, um, yeah. And ha uh, have you done uh, many adaptive competitions prior to this? I've done a few. So I think my first proper adaptive one was this one last year. Um, okay. And no, it's Waterloo. So Waterloo is a few weeks before this. I couldn't do it this year. Um, I'd actually been to stage this year. Um, it's a new place, so I missed that one this year. And this is the second time I've done this. I won this last year. Um, and I did Wheel World as well last year, which is kind of a big one for us. That was, that in, was that in America, Wheel World? Yeah, yeah. Okay. December, yeah. 
And how does Marbella compare? Like, so now you've done like Wadsalone is probably like the big like European adaptive comp, and then what? Uh, Wheelwad is the big kind of global one. How does Marbella compare? Yeah. Marbella, I without meaning to create divisions, I I'd say Marbella is now the one in Europe that's kind of taken over. Um, I Excellent. think it's the, the biggest and best one, um, both for adaptives and for for able bodied. This, this year has been an absolute big last year. This year has just thrown through the roof. Um, the venues, I mean, the here here is the football stadium it's down on the beach. It's just a variety of events. There's so much, the workouts, there's so much variation. A bit too much cardio for me this year. I like a barbell, and there was a lot of cardio, but still straight through it. But yeah, this one is, is mega. That's excellent. Um, and what what are the parameters then for the? So you won the the standing adaptive. Yeah. So explain to me what the entry requirements for that are like for for because it's kind of it's it's more vague than I would have seen at other competitions. If you know what I mean. Yeah. So with Wheelwood in America, so that's kind of the global one where you compete online. You have um, just the open, basically. Uh, where you're in lower real world, real world, the difference between real world and the CrossFit Games, real world split down. Two of the games, I would be in lower, world, but lower one point, which is above me. Yeah. And you've got uh, two points below me. And you've also got um, lower minor, so you've got two feet that have issues with their legs. Okay. So in that category. So with someone like my bear, where it's still growing, they can't do all those things. So those four names you see that. We've all got different issues, different yeah. abilities. So we're all put in one standing category and then you've got to try and make it uh, across the board. Whereas in obviously with a wider variety of categories, you can make it more specific for the disability. Is this is this Jules um yeah it is. Yeah. Allegedly. Okay, so it was mixed gender, the it was mixed gender um adaptive yeah. division. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's I cool. believe right. she's got her own I believe she's got her own uh, podium, but she was okay. only female trainer. And that's the big thing with Europe is that where we was massive and you got people entering from around the globe, my bear still hasn't got that kind of focus. Yeah. I'm hoping next year, now that we've done a couple of solid years and people see what a big competition it is, we can get the Europeans over here because in America they've had um adaptive competitions for about ten years we were Um whereas in still quite new over here. So we're trying to really grow it and get more people over here just to show people what you can do. Because people think over in Europe don't really understand all the adaptive things, but it's growing yeah. in the UK. Um, and hopefully we'll bring them all out here and, and have a bigger competition next year with more categories rather than just standing adaptive. That's cool. That's excellent. So your your aim is to come back next year. What else then? Are you, are you looking at Water Blues or anything else in the meantime? So I've got Wheelwood um, in December, so that's my goal. Um, this was my first CrossFit Comp of the year because I was focused on the Invictus Games that I got selected in February and that was my focus for this, this year. So it's my first competition of the year. Then I got Willwood again in December. So that's a big one for me. I'd like to podium there. I finished sixth last year, had a bit of a shoulder injury, still kind of sick. So I'd like to kind of get on the podium there. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and yeah, be open for CrossFit Games and see how I do there. Excellent. Um, well, congratulations. I think we're going to pass over to uh, Luca now. I look forward to, you yep. to chatting to you again another time. Um, yes, congratulations well. on this and best local wheel what thanks very much cheers man cheers i'll grab i'll grab someone for you yeah yeah please do no worries so i think we have luca coming now man that guy's loud isn't he oh the beep was even louder this is oh look at this the champ you hear me? I can. The champion is sitting in the seat in the hot seat. How are you? Ah, uh, like five five minutes ago I finished that bit of nasty sprint. I'm still uh, catching my breath a little bit. What was the last workout? Uh, Twenty-one ring muscle ups, uh, eighteen thrusters at seventy kilos, and fifteen burpees goes on for us at thirty inch blocks. Well. Not a fucking chance I'd be sitting down for a conversation after that. <laughs> Fair play. Um, so you you last last season you had um this was your you kind of got injured during this competition last year. Um yes, and then 
I think I kind of met you in Madrid and you kind of you spoke about the fact that injuries have been kind of just a niggle throughout the last like eight, 12 months where you, I remember talking to Lazar and he was saying, I'm really excited for Luca because I want this to be his. I'm fully fit and I'm going to compete now. How do you feel? Is this like setting you up with confidence and ready to go? Yeah, this was Madrid was kind of first uh, first trial. So I would say my new body, something I was working long time to try to be healthy because I was always competing but there was very few times where I was actually 100% fit and ready to compete so after Madrid I had a team comp last week which was also not so hard so I wanted this to be kind of my uh, 100% go at the top and see what I'm actually able to do when I'm 100% fit and healthy excellent um, so you won in that was in Crete you won that as well that was a paired competition was it? Yes, yeah, that was in, in Cyprus. Team, team Man, you're going to have your bank balance is going to be very healthy by the time the Open comes around. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. Um, okay, so at the weekend wore on. So you you started off, you won the first event. That was a running event. And I remember seeing your stories that you were happy that you run a running event. Is, has that been something that, that has eluded you for a little while? Uh, so I would say two years ago, I think I was the best runner in the field. I was 88 kilos, and at that time, any competitions I did, I won running events, but I was really, really weak. So uh, for last year, uh, I was really trying to focus on my strength, and I gained, I think, now like close to 96. So I gained close to 8 kilos, but in the process, I lost a little bit of my running. And in Madrid, I was actually eighth place in the run. And if okay. I was first, if I was first, I think overall, I would be the winner for that uh, point gap that was between and since Madrid running was coming back but after Madrid I really stepped on the gas uh, for my running and this was kind of a good test it was for the trail run and I won it by a lot so I was really happy that's pretty remarkable though to improve that much in running in like four weeks is it? yeah but uh, I, I said after the, the after the Madrid I remember I was talking to Lazar and he said what do you think was missing and I said I think I was missing like to be back where I was and after Madrid we were running I was running uh, around 20 to 30k uh, a week four weeks straight and yeah it paid off and then and is there any concern there when you start when you make that big of a switch is there any concern that like you'll like get injured you'll pull something you'll wear something you'll you know your hamstrings or anything like that I think I think it all depends on how well you take care of your body I have always told people I was over past you think you're training too much. I think in the end it all depends on how well and how focused you are on your recovery and how your life is like that. And uh, I can say since I was healthy after semi final, my life was 100% focused on training and I think my recovery was best yet. So I think I saw, like, did everything I could to stay Okay. Um, and over the, so did you, do you know where you finished in that final workout? I was third. Third, okay. So first, first, sixth, first, fifth, first, third. So not a bad uh, result from the weekend. Um, yeah. Where's next after this? Where are you headed next? Uh, so in one month, I have a competition in Bilbao, also in Spain. And then after that, it's the cycle. Okay. And are you hanging around the Gulf then after Dubai? Yeah. You gotta, you yes. gotta make, you gotta make bank. <laughs> after Dubai, we are doing team competition actually. Uh, okay. Lazar, 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 and is it true, you said to me, one of the things you said uh, in passing was you were like, sometimes you go around like the UAE, there might be like a shopping center, or a mall that has a competition that's like $2,000 and it's just like one event. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, it's really true. Like, there is a, especially during winter time in UAE, there is so many competitions. Like last year I did four the off seasons. And uh, yeah, you can profit a lot as an asset. And for me, I'm trying to make profit my full time job. Somebody who is like active, sting still up and coming, and uh, I would always rather compete a little bit more than than do a full time job. 
So that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm to do next season. So. Cool. Okay. Um, well, listen. I want. I want after uh, after Dubai. I want you to come on, like properly come on the show, um, and we'll have a better a better environment to have a chat in then. Um, so I think is Phil Heskett or is there someone else there as well? Yeah. Is there? Yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's waiting right here. Okay. So pass me on to Phil there, and we'll catch up again soon, uh, Luca. Okay. Amazing. Great talking to you. Thank you. You too. Me. You too. All the best. Anyway, see you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> I almost said I love you there. That would have been funny, wouldn't it? Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Good okay. well right. job, mate. Well done. Hello, Philip. Hey, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Can you hear me? I can. Or, yeah. Um, how was your weekend? Yeah, it was good, mate. Actually, uh, enjoyed myself. I did. I'm. Where are you? What leader were you in? I'm looking for you here. Fuck, I'm actually on, oh sorry, swearing, elite, I'm on the elite, man. Oh no, you're okay, swearing, I've said way worse than that already and it's only been, oh there you are, I found you, I found you, I found you. I was, I don't know, I, I was looking I'm... for the, I was looking for the Swedish flag. Oh, uh, middle um, of the, middle of the, middle of the pack on. Yeah, um, um how, so how was the weekend, you said, like, okay, here's a question for you. You, that's a programmer, so you have coaching, you've programmed competitions, you've programmed like multiple competitions, uh, in Norway and all around there, um, how does this compare like do you when you sign up for a competition are you like uh you know a crossfit coach that goes to a different gym and you're like this is shit or like oh this is exactly what i do like are you judging everything really harshly with a critical eye um i wouldn't say i judge it like really harshly but i i'm first of all i don't sign up to many competitions anymore um but i do like to like look at other competitions um yeah. and i always i feel like i always have I like to have an opinion on the competitions because it is something that I really enjoy and I do myself. Um, I mean, this competition, I definitely couldn't be overly critical of. Um, and I, I actually think that I would criticize it less than maybe someone who doesn't have the experience of, of programming because perhaps I understand some of the uh, like uh, restrictions and logistics that are in place that maybe um, like, I, let's say, for example, I would say the major criticism of this competition is that we never did a CrossFit workout. I don't think Luca, who won the event, probably worked for over eight minutes in any event apart from, like, the just run. running. Yeah. So maybe you would say a competition is missing a longer event. But I also understand that there was a thousand athletes. And to get a thousand athletes... Um, 15 minutes on the floor like a 15 minute amrap for example is extremely extremely difficult and then people would then complain about the time schedule because you're going from six in the morning till midnight <laughs> so there's got to be there's got to be some like give and take there and I, I think that they did actually a very good job here i thought the workouts yes they were relatively short apart from the uh the run yeah but i think that they tested a lot of different stuff and they're actually really fun and they they used a lot of different arenas, which I think is very cool. It makes the, I, I'm a big advocate now of the like athlete experience. Like what is the competition? Not everyone is here to win and not everyone is here to, you know, with that, everyone wants to do their best, but a lot of people won't, they know they're not going to be on the podium. Yeah, yeah. So like, what are you giving them? And if you give them a really good experience, they went to a beach they went to a really beautiful mountain run it hurt when you were doing it but like it was beautiful when when you were running around the arena here is like yeah it's like gladiator it's so cool so you've given them a really really good experience so you come away yes maybe you didn't podium or you had a good or a bad event but i think what they did here would give everyone a really cool weekend and you go away thinking i'm going to sign up for that next year so i think that they, they did a good job um, and then obviously this year you had uh, Mia and Sam and Joshua and Antonia. Um, you were kind of looking after them and helping them with their team going to the games. Uh, would you rather do that or do this? Would you rather be the one competing or like pushing someone else into the arena? Um, I mean, I, I like both. I, I don't. So it's been a long time now since I've competed with the goal of you know, going to a competition and being like, I'm going to try and win this competition because I, I don't have that in me anymore. Like, I don't train at that level anymore. I don't I don't have the time for it. At some point, yes, I was pretty good in, in the past, but that has to, 
that has to give way at some point as you raise a child and try to grow a business. And this competition has been the first that I've been able to go to um, and not feel that anxiety of like, oh, you know, ha how am I going to place on a leaderboard? You know, oh, what are people going to think about me when I finish 12th or 14th? And I went to the CrossFit Games eight years ago. Like, they're like, oh, you know, what happened to him? I probably overthink a little bit too much what other people think about me. And this was the first time I was able to come to a competition and really just enjoy it for being here with, you know, we actually came with a group of boys. There was seven, there was eight of us, uh, seven boys and then Mark and Mark's girlfriend, Emily, in a house together. We just had great fun over the weekend. People have competed at all different levels. Um, so that has been fun. But I also really enjoy the coaching side, like going to the games. That was the first time I've been to the games as a, uh, a coach. And it was great because the team did great. I would imagine maybe it's not the same experience if the team came Gets last. Close. That would be probably <laughs> yeah. that would probably have, that would be a very challenging experience, especially with your yeah. wife being on the team. So luckily, I didn't experience like I didn't have that experience. I got the to you know go with the I got the highs of being a, a yeah. coach at the games. Everyone was super happy, and that was uh, something I would really really love to do again, uh, whether it be with a, a team or an individual, but. The competing side for me now is just because I love, I think CrossFit competitions are just fun. And I'm finally in a place where I don't feel like I, I need to go to, to win a competition. I can go and just enjoy competing and see if I can push to the level that I've been training at, which I think I did, uh, which I think I did this weekend. You know, like just, just above middle of the pack is about what I deserved. And I was pretty wrecked by the last day because I'm not used to this sort of, it's been a year since I competed and I, I don't train at that level anymore. Um, so I'm super happy with some performances and I knew I would be bad in, uh, you know, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit sort of thing <laughs> across the weekend. That would be a pretty appropriate meme for this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, I mean, it's been a real fun. It's been a good time. But it's even like looking at your scores, like it seems like it's, you know, like there's not too much opportunity when you're, as you said, running a business, coaching, uh, parenting, that kind of stuff. There's probably not too much of an opportunity for you to piss off on a mountain run, like to practice. Like, so that first one was always going to be like major damage control, I imagine. Yeah. And I, I, I'm super happy. Like, honestly, the run was, it's almost, uh, I was so happy with that because, yeah, I, I really don't get time to do those long running sessions. And if I have an hour in a day, I choose to do some lifting and a, and a you know, an eight to 15 minute typical metcon like that's on the program and i don't do long runs very often at all so i was really happy that i still had that in the locker things that like i don't practice so much anymore like the skill stuff like the handstand walk and then these ring muscle ups in the last event were really tough for me because i don't really get in that amount of volume anymore but the things that i used to be quite good at like the the snatch complex event and the sandbag event i actually still place top 10 on those so i was i was really happy with that so it's just uh you can't i I realize now you, you know you can't be mad yeah. about mad about mad about placing badly when you haven't trained to that level that that is that's that's silly and yeah. maybe in the two three years ago when I, I probably still wasn't training that level i would have got mad oh i should have done better on this i should have done better at that without thinking okay you don't deserve to because you haven't trained at that level so you know this weekend i'm going away with a really good feeling because i think i performed to the level that i train at uh, or even better. Like I, I, I surprised myself with some things that I, for me, I think I did really good on on some things that I haven't been training so hard. So I'm going away with a good feeling. And is it is it a good enough feeling to make you think like, oh, Masters could be fun now in the in the Open? I mean, not really. I don't think I, like the the difference between like 35 year old Masters are almost as good as. <laughs> You know the the oh the, the elite the, the problem like, the problem with thirty five year old masters is it's all the same people that were competing exactly. when you were it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the same the people like, when I'm thirty five Bjorgvin's or thirty five a couple of years later or whatever yeah. like you know it, it, and it's not even comparable like I'm not at that semi final going yeah. to the games level anymore and the amount of training that it would take to get there is I just don't see that in my future like having the time to do that like if anything it's going to be less i love doing the affiliate classes and i love just jump like doing almost like the 60 minute version of the of the program that i have and jumping in with the guys at the gym and that is not how you get to the crossfit games yeah. but 
I also would love to say, okay, um, Mia, there's a competition coming up, a partner competition. Do you want to jump into that? Or like, you know, let's go to Marbella next year with the with the group again and have some fun. Like, I still would love to be able to just jump into those competitions without necessarily feeling the pressure to like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm look, I'm doing this, I'm trying to peak for this competition in a year's time or this competition in six months' time. Mm. I, I kind of like that it can be a little bit more spontaneous and just like rather than just saying I'm doing it for fun, like actually do it for fun, like and enjoy myself, like not say you're doing it for fun and then come away with a bitter feeling because you didn't actually enjoy it. You know, maybe, maybe a few too many people do that. I like that. Um, I think is Helen Nutter there? Is she? She's next up, I think, in the hot seat. Is she? Is she? Yeah. Got, you? Yep. Yeah. Um, do you want to pass over to her, Phil? And I'll chat to you soon. Yeah. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers, man. Good seeing you. There you go. Man, this is like, there's so much change happening here. Hello. I do this. Hello. Hi, how are you? Just, uh, I'm very well. How are you? Oh, you're on brand. Look, you're on brand. Well done. That's great. That's oh, let's great. go. That's great. <laughs> Not great on um, these things, I'll be honest. So. Oh, well, you, you can't be any worse than me, so you'll be all right. Um, <laughs> so you, you, you were in the elite female uh, category, um, and yeah. you, you're... Uh, I'm probably not 100 percent sure where you are, but probably fourth or fifth, depending on what happened. Basically, is it in that final? Yeah, I was. Um, I was fifth going in. I think yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure where I came in. Out. I wouldn't be surprised if I dropped a couple. Um, but I went in. This is new for me, I guess. I went in. Probably knew I couldn't get on the podium, a bit too far out. So yeah. me and my coach were like, "You just got to try some stuff." Like, ring muscle up to me. I don't. I don't love jumping up quickly. Um, <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I probably didn't look like I was, but I probably jumped up quicker than I normally like to. Yeah. So, and it, you know, I kind of went off plan a little bit, but gave it my all. So, who knows? Went off, went off I'm plan. Assuming, I'm assuming went, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> went off, went off plan. I went into a ditch, or went off plan, and like, it, you know, it was a good risk to take. Um, more of a ditch side, I'd say. <laughs> okay. Um, just like went out with a big set. I went out with an eight muscle ups, jumped up, and then only did a two. And I was like, yeah. oh, maybe you should have got a five there. But um, it's just a it's just a new thing. Like, haven't done loads on long straps. Like, just got to try it, right? So. And how was the weekend overall? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've loved it. it um, learned a lot again. So I've been doing a few individual comps kind of in my off-season to try and get to learn a bit about myself as an athlete. Like, I normally do team stuff. Um, it's only going to make me better for team stuff and individual stuff in the in the future. But really enjoyed it learn um it's a bit different to your own gym right like longer transitions forcing you to go unbroken and stuff you don't want to go unbroken but it's been fun it's been good it's been a good challenge um and you were at the games um like two two years ago yeah 20 21 yeah 20, um, 21 so a bit of time ago yeah um and it is is team your thing do you think or is this you starting to venture into uh individual and wanted to see how you can get on with that um bit of unknown i guess so just to i guess to give a bit of background we went to the games in 21 um the last two years we've been we've been trying we've been a bit unlucky that i've had a teammate injury on the floor both years so 22 my my teammate pulled his hamstring second to last event 23 my teammate uh tore a meniscus first event so we've been kind of knocked out Are they, um, is, that, is that different teammates different teammates yeah, yeah. okay i was gonna <laughs> say that we're, we're going for the group yeah I was like, that'd be so shit if it was the same person twice. <laughs> no, uh, we're just going through the group at the moment. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to, we basically decided to take a bit of time. Obviously, season changed. So, we're like, we all need a bit of time to focus on ourselves. So, this is where I've been doing these individual ones. I've always wanted to, like, keep touch with it, I guess. And we originally said it'd be a three-year thing. So, next year should be last one but we are we, we need to like have the team chat and be like do we want to go for it do we want to commit to it so i think a little bit up in the air just yeah well i've got to try while i'm here right so if it's yeah. not team it's individual and that's it for um, me, really and how did marbella stack up so you've done like semi-finals a few times and you've done the games how did marbella step up is it is it one for people to keep an eye on in europe do you think yeah i think it's really good i've done a couple in europe um I think it's I think it's like got good events. I love the fact it's got like the different arenas and it's all very well structured and stuff like that. I think actual event wise, I think it's nice to see comps try and do more 
more outdoor stuff. So they obviously had like some of the D ball and stuff like that's really cool, kind of throwing people a bit outside of classic CrossFit. So I think I hope it's I hope it's just on the up really because it's only a couple of years old, right? So yeah. I know every year like athletes are just going to learn more and more. But I think it's drawing drawing some names here. It's drawing a good little crowd. So I think it's yeah, I think it's good. That's cool. And what's next for you now then after this? Um, so I've actually got um, I'm going to Oslo Throwdown in end of October. Okay. So that's probably yeah last weekend of October. Um, and then I think I need to chill out for a bit. So I've just got back from Madrid. I've literally gone Madrid, Marbella, Oslo in the space of two months. I think yeah. then go and you know get into a little bit of an off season, make a plan for next year, and then figure out what it's going to be. Um, Phil's probably programming Oslo, is he? You should get on to him and ask like what's the yeah. Story maybe he's... I should follow him and uh, hear yeah, it. He's yeah. right here, so I'll have to stalk yeah. him in a second. But <laughs> yeah. Um, but listen, it was really it was really nice chatting to you. I think there's someone else there. I think Martin Cuervo is there, maybe or someone. Uh, I think if you want to I'll pass, just pass over. on, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's great. Thank it was you. really nice talking to you. Nice meeting you. You too. See you later. Bye bye. Um, I love this. A bit from, sorry. <laughs> from Ramber. I love that accent Whoop. and then British or Aussie. It was it was British. I have to put it like here or what? Yeah. I think this guy might be Spanish. Beautiful. Hello. Hello. Nice to or, meet you. Uh, you too. Hola. I should I should have learned Spanish for this. I'm shit at Spanish, so this is no Fine. use. Um, I'll speak slowly because uh, I want you to speak slowly when you speak back so we can both understand each other. Um, you finished up in... Uh, you finished up in second, is that right? Yeah, that's right. How exciting. You and you, to... were, you were third going into the final, is that right? Yeah. Uh, I was second... Uh, before this event too yeah okay um and you're so you're the home hope you're like the the you're like the spaniard that everyone's yeah, cheering spaniard. for all week um is this your first time doing marbella or did you do it last year too no it's actually my first time i did also another competition here in, in the region in spain but marbella is the the first try that's cool how did you that's find cool. it did you did you like it yeah, uh, really entertaining all the weekend in different areas. You know, we were doing the trail run on Friday, then swimming a little bit in the, in the beach on Saturday, and and then a lot of crossfit. You know, so so it has been uh, really really pleasant for us. That's cool. Um, where do you train, uh, Martin? Who coaches you, or where do you train? <laughs> Well, my coach is Damian, Damian Benigno. He, he is the director of this program, Origin. Okay. Uh, the, the program is like uh, uh, a team uh, of, of two different uh, enterprises. And uh, it has really uh, like a few months of life, you know, it's uh, like brand new. But okay. we are. We are improving a lot. I left my job, uh, as I told us, uh, to your to your college. No, college. Okay. No. Uh, University. To your, to your no. Uh, I I told your partner. I I don't know. I don't remember her name. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I follow. I follow. I follow. In okay. in, the, in the interview, I I told her that I left my 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 previous job, and now okay. I'm resting. I'm focusing in CrossFit. So, so that's really fine. So you're a full-time CrossFit athlete. That's your yeah, that's, yeah. that's your job now. How exciting. Um, yes. And uh, when did you make that change? Was that very recent? Well, uh, I was expecting all, all the year, last year, to, to do that, that move. But I have to finish my, my degree in international commerce and then a master in logistics. So the master uh, has to uh, complete like uh, a requirement of hours in, in a job. So I I have to to do that, and then I focus on on what's really important for me. That's cool. <laughs> uh, what's what's next after this? So you're going to collect your medal, your silver medal, and your big fake check, and then where are you going next? What's the next competition? Uh, well, we expect to do. Uh, like a long off season, you know, some of the other I'm not going to do 
in competition in the winter. And we are more focused on the part of finals and semi-finals events. Cool. So open is basically that's the main focus now is like the actual cross yeah. season. Yeah, yeah, the, the actual season. That's cool. Excellent. Um, well, listen, I think Victor is there as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So if you want to, if you want to, yeah, it was really nice meeting you, Martin. Okay, nice to meet you too. You too. What, what was your name? Peter. Well, you can call me Pedro. Okay. Everyone calls me Pedro anyway, so just it makes okay, it easier for you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> cool. Cheers. <laughs> Fuck's sake! I just introduced myself as a man. Oh. <laughs> I didn't remember. Thank you. Oh shit! Hello. Oh, you don't have headphones. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. You? I'm good. Um, did Phil give you that T-shirt? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to. We're the same. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so congratulations, you finished third. Nice little bronze medal, and uh, I assume you get some kind of a novelty check as well before you leave, will you? Yeah, we'll see. I hope you're here. Like I fucking hope so. Um, yeah. <laughs> how, how was your weekend? Have you done Marbella before? Is this your first time there? No, I was supposed to do it last year, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't come. But uh, so this is my first first time. Um, most people will recognize your name from like trancing the entire world in an open workout. Um, yeah, exactly. Is that a? Uh, is that all people should know you first? Should people be getting ready to watch you now this open? Or like, are you planning on pushing on beyond that? And like always. Know, head, heading for <laughs> always. Texas, heading for uh, the big game. I, I always want to uh, like uh, getting better and uh, go for like the bigger competitions, bigger stages. And uh, yeah, um, I'm just getting better. So uh, go in the right direction. <laughs> um, so third this, uh, this weekend, um yeah. if i was i was actually i found it interesting earlier on speaking to luca he was saying that after um madrid his brother said like what held you back and he said running so he just ran like fucking non-stop it sounded like for like a month um where where do you think like what do you think is holding you back from say being first is luca just that good or do you think you have some holes that you need to shore up now over the next couple of weeks like i actually think this competition luca luca is pretty good. he's very good He's in good shape, so nothing could take that away from him. He's a, he's in really good shape. But like I, I during this weekend, I think I could have managed the second place because I done some bad mistakes, like some like some silly mistakes that I shouldn't been doing on this level. So uh, looking back at it, uh, like touching a line, getting a bad no ref, uh, but otherwise my performance has become much better so i'm uh, i'm i'm actually really pleased overall with this weekend but uh like the first place was lucas this uh, week this that's good um so what's next for you now you're going back uh to the drawing board we're prepared i guess heading hit, hitting your off season have you any other competitions lined up yeah i'm going to do the oscar throwdown uh later uh, in this month uh, and then i have the national uh, the world championship in uh, functional fitness that oh that's uh, i have i have three exactly that's cool so are, are you oh. from norway no you're from sweden no no i'm from sweden sweden okay okay and is i have three recognized in sweden is it you know the way norway has like uh grants and stuff is that the same in sweden or no uh we have got it uh, this year uh, in okay. the like we're going to do like get financed for for the competitions and everything so i think that will uh, pump up the, the sport and uh, from every ages and stuff. so That's i cool. think we are on the right path okay well listen i mean if you can get you can go to world championships if it's just been uh financed and then you can just become the poster boy for IF3 in Sweden and just like yeah, exactly. fall, fall asleep on a bed of money every night and just have a great time. <laughs> It'd be great. It would be, um, be good. Well, listen, congratulations on your weekend. Congratulations on your third place finish. I think uh, the winning team or two members of the winning team might be beside you there. I think Lauren might yeah. pass over. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so if you want to hand over to Lauren and then uh, and we'll catch up again soon. I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thanks for having Cheers. me. Bye. Nice. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I had to get that Spanish guy to say Pedro. I could not get him to say it. So what are we going to do? We're going to clip that up.
So I think one of these has English and one doesn't. <laughs> like that? And then you're speaking. <laughs> Peter, will you come sit? Hello. Yeah, just Hello. How are you? Not saying anything. I can't I'm very hear good. Anything. So you're, uh, I'm, you're here with, I'm here with my teammate. <laughs> this is you. This is, I'm not even going to fucking try and say that. Bjorn Fair? Team yeah. Bjo yeah, Bjorn Fair. Yeah, it's uh, uh, like a beer daddy if you want to translate it. But wow, like okay, right. Who, pick, who picked that name? I don't. You didn't pick yeah, that name, I guess. Uh, no, it's our coach. Uh, it's our coach. And our, okay. And oh, bear. Coach. Okay, bear. bear. I, heard, I, yeah, I thought bear. like I thought like beer, beer daddy. I was like, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Um, and you're so Butch's Lab. Butch's Lab is like famous for its teams. It's famous for its its team competitions and its teams. Um, yeah. So do you got have you have you guys been there long? Have you represented uh, Butch's Lab before? Yeah, we have. We represented Butch's Lab last year, and uh, we have been there, yeah, for some years now. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of great athletes there, so we are proud representing that box. So it's a very great, great place to be and uh, to yeah get better, better every year. Um, and there was a Butch's Lab team in Berlin this year. Was that you guys or, or yeah? Yeah, we went there. And we had a high ambition. We really wanted to uh, go to the games, but it was not our 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 year. Uh, one of our males uh, had uh, got sick, and uh, yeah, that's just how it is. Uh, we want to try uh, next year. And was it the same four? Is it the same four people here that were in Berlin? Uh, no, we changed one male uh, because uh, <laughs> was, it, was it the guy that it. was it the guy that got it, sick? Yeah, it actually were, but uh, he uh, he said no, he couldn't uh, do it anymore because of yeah, his yeah. family. So yeah. uh, we didn't change him. We did not change him because yeah, of yeah, that. yeah. It's like oh, that's con that's very convenient that the guy who got sick yeah. is just not around anymore. Um, yeah, that's that's great though. So it'll make it all the sweeter then when you actually do get your ticket and you do get to go to well Texas now. I was going to say Madison. Um, so how does Marbella compare then? You've done other team competitions. Is Marbella one? Yeah. Do you think you'll always have this marked on your calendar as one to come back for? Yeah, we just talk about it. It's a very good timing. It's a good uh, timing. We're here to test our team because we've got a new male on our team. So, uh, yeah, and we like the weather. We're from Denmark and it's very cold. So it's a cool environment and it's, it's nice. There's both swimming, running. There's a lot of movement. So it's a good uh, place to come and test our fitness as a team. Well, to test your team, you got second, first, sixth, first, 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 second. So I'm assuming this is a positive result for the test. This is like, it's yeah. gone well. Yeah, it's gone um, very well, but still we did uh, had some mistakes. But yeah, that's just how it is, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's that's team sport, I guess. Is it more yeah. pressure because it wasn't it wasn't a large team? It wasn't a large team uh, field like you have seven teams like two spanish two british a swedish and irish and you guys is does that make it harder because if you mess up a workout like chances are the team like the two teams that are chasing you are going to be the ones that beat you or whatever does that add pressure to it and it's a smaller field yeah of course it adds a little bit of pressure but still we're really trying to focus on ourselves and just uh, only look how how can we do this out the best way uh, but of course, we we are here and we wanted to win, and we yeah we we thought we could, so that's what we did. Try yeah, to that's that's a very um a very Jeffrey Adler answer. I wanted to win and I did. We <laughs> thought we could win and we did. Um, so yeah. what's next for you guys then? Is it, are you heading back now into the into the lab for an off season and then we'll see you again in the yeah. spring kind of thing? Yeah, we are we're going all season now and just focuses uh, on our weaknesses and uh, yeah, that's what we do and we really wanted to uh, give our best shot at the semi-finals and uh, hopefully uh, get our tickets this year. We really yeah want to train hard for that. And the four that were here in Marbella, that's the four that are going to continue into next season, yeah? Yeah, it is. And this is um, our first test of the team. And was is the new guy from Butcher's Lab? He was there already in the gym. Yeah, 
he actually were on a team on another team and and competed in Berlin, but uh, he came on our team, and uh, yeah, he joined okay. us. So are you guys the best team out of Butcher's Lab then? If you're pick, if you're cherry picking, uh, what actually, others? it's hard to say, but no, we have a very we have some very great teams at Butcher's Lab. Uh, Kriya, Team Kriya, uh, and Team Fleck are very also yeah, very yeah. good teams. So uh, yeah, but it's uh, very nice to be around them and learn and to approach each other. So yeah. Okay, That's so right. are are we hoping then? Um, are we hoping then that we? won't see you in Marbella next year because you'll still be uh, living off your glory from Texas, basically. Is that the plan? Mm, I don't know. Uh, it's a very great place to be. So maybe just uh, like uh, ending the season here could be nice yeah. next year. That's cool. Um, yeah. Well, listen, it, it was really nice meeting uh, you and like looking at your teammate. Um, <laughs> I think Lauren is there. If you want to pass back over to Lauren and congratulations on your weekend. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. It was really fun to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. That's funny. Um, that's really funny. That's good. He's a good guy. Um, hey, Pedro. Hello. Um, so we're, we're finished. Um, you have your, have you got, do you know who's won the female? I do. Cause that was the problem and why I can bring her over. Cause on the floor in that final workout, it should have been clear cut, but it wasn't because she had such a bad result and the other two were so close around her. There was no way to tell it, but yes, Natalie Nishka did make it through. Um, incredible for the Swedes just because we haven't really seen her at semi-finals levels before i don't think so actually yeah. for her to come out in a field that was i know pretty strong at that kind of mid-european level let's say really really cool for her and she seems like a really good light like just a nice lady and where is she just like uh how can i say this when it's not insulting is she just like a randomer or like is she part of a co like does she have a coach is she just does she just go to a crossfit gym and do her own programming or has she is she with like prepared or with someone else I mean, she's out of CrossFit Holistic. I um, I don't know if she's working with a particular coach or anything, because honestly, up until this week, she yeah. hadn't really crossed my radar. Um, I'll be keeping an eye out for her now because she had a pretty impressive result. I think what she had, I think I said it earlier, was it about four event wins, three event wins? Yeah. Like she had a really good run um, in the middle part of that competition when we got to the more CrossFit stuff. So off the back of the swim and we got into the Marbella Arena, you know, she really like put the, uh, oh, thank you, you'll find it out for me. Yeah, so like seventh first and tenth. on the pool. Seventh yeah, and tenth yeah, were two end. first. Saint That's Peter, Saint, Saint Pedro. <laughs> she did well there. That was out in the football, uh, the football stadium. Um, a real like kind of endurance workout with burpee over parallettes. Yeah. Not fun. There was too much vomit in that workout for my liking. Wow. There's, so those those three that that was really the turning point. Those three, and then she just held her own in the rest. Like she just kind of like this was obviously damage control. Um, and then she that, just held her own in the rest, really. That smoking Joe, um, it was 21 um, muscle ups. Oh my God, I'm fried. I'm absolutely fried. Yeah, 21 room muscle ups. And, and for some people that came easy and for others, it was just a, a bit more of a slog. As you can imagine, it's a huge amount of kind of rep team after a long weekend of competition. Um, but yeah, she uh, she hung on in there. I could, I wish i could tell you how much but actually it just involved me running up to the mc and going did she win it because <laughs> um, that's the stage you're at at this point in the competition so it, it's the next job for you then is the after party basically um and yeah. then i'm assuming you're going to have like a, a bolt gun in your hand tomorrow morning taking down the rig and help with all that kind of stuff as well at the beginning where i picked up a bolt gun for approximately five seconds shot a camera clip and made myself look like a really hard working individual yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all just for the gram <laughs> your television <laughs> um where are you, where are you next then are you um because i know you do other stuff as well you do like other sports and other like you've other multiple hats that you wear uh when when yeah. is your next uh crossfit outing uh crossfit outing 
TBC. I think it's going to be Sid. Um, okay. In December. In the, December. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fit Fest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, uh, we go on tour with High Rock. So oh, yes. Your your news section. Thank you very much. And helps me as one of their uh, as their like presenter. So we uh, we are off to Chicago for the majors uh, early next month. And then I am in West Virginia with Strongman. And then in between all of that, the rugby union season after the World Cup is starting back up domestically. So we've got rugby union every weekend. Wow, okay. Excellent. Keep it interesting. Um, and Because you were in France for one of the matches, weren't you? Didn't you go to a match? Yeah, I went for Fiji Australia. Probably one of the best games. Actually, we've had a few really good games in the tournament, but that was awesome because off the back for Fiji, off the back of beating England, which they've never done before, then went to their other major tier one nation away from home and kind of comprehensively destroyed their defence. I mean, Australia haven't looked good this tournament, but for Fiji, that's a huge, huge boost. But yeah, it was a, it was a really cool game to be a part of. And then I'm back out this weekend for the quarterfinals. Um, yeah, well, that was well, fun. So literally, you, you get know, home, fly straight back out. Do you know what match you're doing for the quarterfinals? Not yet. It'll be Wales or England. So I don't know. Okay. I don't know which one yet. To be honest, it, like when it comes to World Cup, if it's not Ireland, I couldn't give a fuck. Like I just like. Well, congratulations. Yeah. No, I'm not sure with, it was ever in doubt. I was actually, uh, I was actually with Ewan from Bill Fratley's yesterday, and he was like, "Oh, any other year, I'm not going to do the accent." But he was like, "Oh, any other year, I'd say Scotland would would struggle." But I really think now this year that like they might put it up to you. And I was like, "Man, I just love that blind optimism." And then I, like <laughs> they, after, whatever, they, they scored a try in like ten seconds, and I sent him a, like the eye, eyes looking emoji and the Scottish flag, and he just never replied to it. He just left. <laughs> There is just um, this kind of like eternal optimism with the Scottish team that they so rarely live up to. But I love the Scots because they do, yeah. they're always so passionate that they might do well this year. Yeah, didn't they get like the wooden spoon in the Six Nations like four years in a row or something? Like that? Oh, yeah, like you're really rubbing it into all your Scottish yeah. listeners. Like we'll back off this topic immediately because on the yeah, odd yeah. occasion they've also done really well. Yeah, uh, it's just for some reason can't remember any of them occasions. Um, so <laughs> you're okay. So you're you're off for strongman then, and then uh, this was your first year doing, um, like you did the semi-finals on field kind of stuff. You did the games, uh, the teams at the games, isn't that right? Yeah, and then the um, the finals of the broadcast, like masters and adaptive and age group. Um, and how, did you, how did you find that was that like because obviously you've done tv before and you've done that kind of stuff before but it, it, crossfit is a bit kind of closer to home like so was that like did it hit a bit different yeah it always like it always does like i love working in crossfit because i'm an affiliate owner i live in this world it's like me going to have fun with my friends um berlin for me or in fact any of the semi-finals in europe it's like going into a big family everyone knows each other like it's taken me a little while maybe to like get to know the Scandinavian side of it. But like now we're in this position where you kind of walk into a room and you've got a million people to talk to. And it's one of my favorite places to be. The games is really interesting because actually, as you well know, we don't get to travel stateside that often. So yeah. it's definitely a slightly different experience. Um, but basically living out a dream, let's be honest. Like you get asked to do your job at the CrossFit Games. It doesn't get much better than that. And in terms of production, so slick huge amounts of money goes into it i can't like i work a lot of sports and that is the biggest production i've ever been a part of you know i've been to heineken cup finals i've been to fa cup finals in football and there are more trucks more staff and more going on across the game than any of those things wow yeah I, I don't i think statement. yeah i don't think people quite appreciate how big the broadcast yeah. is behind the cage it's huge well i know after after berlin and semi and like us guys doing it with our phones for the live stream oh, yeah. i think i think people probably realize like a little bit does go into it like if that was the quality <laughs> we came out with they were like oh maybe it actually is kind of hard to do it um but yeah look um i'll let you go uh enjoy your after party and everything uh well done good job this weekend um and hopefully next year we can we can do this in person next year in marbella that would be exciting one Oh ah, yeah, I hope so. I want to be competing next year. I've been here all week and I'm like, screw the media stuff, get me in the water. Like I wanna yeah. run up a hill. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I won't be doing that. But yeah, you you fire ahead. <laughs> you do you do hey, you. I remember a really good partner workout we did at Waterpalooza. Never say never, we could have a team here. Isn't that the workout where afterwards there's that picture of me lying like prostrate on the ground like I've died? <laughs> <laughs> 
outside yeah yeah i, yeah, I remember possibly, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. um well listen it's great seeing you uh well done on the weekend and enjoy the closing ceremonies and everything thanks so much thank you for doing this uh for our crazy escapade this weekend no problem no problem it was a pleasure um okay we'll, we'll, we'll catch up again all the best